And we're also a society that hates women. Now you say, yeah, those male chauvinists, they hate women. No, women hate women. The people who hate women more than anybody else on this planet are feminist. They hate women. They want women to be men. They don't want them to be women. And any woman who says, I believe that it is my desire to be in my home, to raise godly children, to support my husband in the endeavors that he has to go through in order to provide for our family, any woman who does that is considered a failure in our society. She's looked down upon, and I know that from personal experience. I know the things that my wife has suffered, the things that people have said, because, you know, they say, why don't you help your husband? And I, she says, well, I do. No, why don't you get a job? I mean, as a minister, he doesn't make that much money. You could provide other things. You could... What? All right, let's go to chapter 1, verse 27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So we see here that both man and woman were created in the image of God. And both of them have an equal standing before God. The roles that they play in the marriage has nothing to do with a lack of equality. When we will get to the point where it says that a man is head of his home and a wife is to live in submission to her husband, it does not mean that the wife is less than her husband. It does not mean that. If you think it does, then guess what? You've just destroyed the Trinity. Because did not the son submit to his father? So did that make the son less than his father? If you say yes, then you have just committed heresy. Within the Trinity itself, the son submitted to his father. And yet the Bible says the son and the father are one and they are equal. So my wife and I, we are one and we are equal we function in different roles. Okay? Now, today, everyone says, no, if, if, if you know, you've got to have the same role or you're not equal. That's why there's this push by feminists, and they've won the day, to be honest with you. They've won the day that women ought to be fighting on the front lines. That women ought to be doing what men do in everything. And if you deny women that, then you're not treating them as equal. No, what you're doing is you're denying that men and women are different and that they were made different by a creator God. We are different and we were created for different roles, but we are equal. We're all made in the image of God. God blessed them in verse 28 and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. That subdue the earth was also given to the woman. But there is a different role in subduing the earth. Now, I mean, a woman's not even worthy of love in today's culture unless she's five foot ten and weighs seven kilos or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you know that, right? We say she's not even worthy of this kind of stuff. That's only for... Very special women. And, that, and that's the kind of, you know, your women, your wives constantly are looking at women in magazines who aren't even real. And they're going, I don't look like this. You know, Cindy Crawford, the famous supermodel, she said something one time that was really wise and true. They were interviewing her and she said, what you need to understand is Cindy Crawford doesn't look like Cindy Crawford. And they said, what do you mean? She goes, do you really think my legs are that long? You know, they can do great things with a computer. And when I'm bent over like this with a beach ball, yeah, I've got a little roll of fat here too, but they can move that away. They can take that off. And so what happens is just normal women are being compared and they compare themselves to these pictures that aren't even real. Not even the supermodel looks like that. And they walk around going, how could my husband love me? And then if they walk in the living room and the husband is watching a television show, 
where the women do look like that, don't think, man, that that doesn't impact your wife negatively. That it doesn't make her think again, am I even loved? But now he goes to nine, he says, likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing. Modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments. Whoa. That tells me that there is clothing that's improper for a Christian woman. All right. I mean, that's just logic. There is clothing that is improper for a Christian woman. Now, he says the clothing must be modest. Modest. This is a very important. It's literally proper clothing with modesty is the way it, it goes in the original text. So with modesty, my wife has a really good thing that she says and she goes, if your clothing is a frame for your face from which the glory of God is to shine, it's it's proper. If it draws attention to your face. If your clothing draws attention to your body, to outline it, to make it noticed, then it's sensual. It's sensual. What you're doing is wrong. Now, I want to step off for just a second. Women, you need to understand something. Men are not as dumb as you think they are. My, my wife and I have a friend in Illinois, and uh, she's a very pretty lady, very pretty. And um, if she walked in that door right now, every man in this room, if he turned and saw her, this is what they would say. Well, that's a very pretty lady. That's a very elo- eloquent lady, elegant lady. That's a beautiful lady. And that's that's what they would think. But ladies, there are also women that aren't half as attractive as that lady I just described to you, either in their face or in their body. And they could walk in that door. And the moment every man heard the door open and he looked over there, if he was a godly man, he would have to go like this. Because it's not beauty. It's sensuality. And even though you can't exactly write down the rules and put it all on paper, when you see it, you know it. There is a difference between beauty and sensuality. And God is not against beauty. He is against sensuality. In Philippians, we are told to think on things that are excellent, that are noble, that are just, that are right, that are true. The way a woman carries herself and the way she dresses ought to promote the following types of words. Modesty. Discretion. Wisdom. Beauty. Elegance. Refinement. But not sensuality. Luxury. Extravagance. You know, extravagance, ladies, is when your husband wants to wants you to take off your earrings so he can make them into lures to catch northern pike. <laughs> now, ladies, this is, you know, I've been giving your husbands a lot of tasks. Let me give you one. Seek to find out what this means and go wherever the Lord shows you. There is nothing more attractive than a woman who has this look of wisdom and discretion and nobility and simplicity. 